Let me just interest. Gentlemen, <coughs> sorry. I have to move this conversation forward. Um, President Uru Kenyatta last week uh, reviewed the measures, COVID protocols to uh, secure the country, to protect the country against COVID-19. And uh, over the weekend, there was this pastor who said this. this about, it was about 10 minutes, 11, 11 minutes, but this is what we captured for you. We just want to talk about it briefly. When this pandemic started, we joined with you and endured the lockdown for more than four months because we wanted to fight this virus and eliminate it. We endured our, our job losses, businesses were closed, our livelihoods were taken away from us in the hope that everything would go back to normal. But as soon as the curve started to flatten, we thought our lives will resume back to normal. Then you, Mr. President, and your brother, Raila, restarted the BBI reggae. And you started, together with your followers, to crisscross the country in utter disregard to the laid down corona protocols which your government had put in place. And then when your former brother, William Ruto, saw this, he also resumed his 2022 presidential campaigns, also disregarding the protocols that were put in place. Mr. President, let, it put me, let me put it to you plainly. It is this careless action by you, the politicians, that has made the rallies to become the super spreaders of this virus. And this can be confirmed by the number of politicians that have contracted the virus, such as Honor Raila and others who have even succumbed to it and died. Mr. President, you and your fellow politicians are to blame for this devastating third wave, and the back stops with you. Unfortunately, it is we, the common Mwanainchi, who have to carry the brunt and suffer the consequences because of what you and your fellow politicians have done. And we do this while you continue living your lavish lifestyles, thanks to the taxes we continue to pay even as we lose our source of income. All right, that's uh, two minutes worth donating to Bishop Peter Ambuka of Pefa Kahawa West. Gentlemen, putting that to perspective and looking at the kind of intervention that a lot of sectors are asking. We just did a story about the Chamber of Commerce asking for um, review of this. There are several other organizations, banks saying, telling banks they should revert to the moratoriums and all that. Looking at the kind of outcry following what the president said, I want you to put to perspective the pain of Bishop Ambuka. Let me begin with you, Murak. The pain is uh, real, the pain is uh, legitimate, it is uh, justified. There are petitions that are, are being sent to State House to do something about the plight of the citizens are uh, legitimate. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, they are coming in a, an unstructured uh, manner. Okay. I know that uh, this the dilemma of uh, how do we possibly assemble to put our heads together around the situation that uh, is evolving. Uh, when you look at uh, the present uh, lockdown, and we are all uh, affected, um, just now I have a permit that I must use to gravitate back home, without which I would be apprehended along the way and other people there. We are affected. We are all affected. We have lost incomes. We can't move, uh, etc. And we get to a point where we are almost uh, blaming the president for the present lockdown. I think the lockdown itself seemed uh, rather inevitable. Kemri warned us towards the end of last year that uh, by around uh, March, mid-March, if we continued behaving the way we were behaving, the situation in the country would reach a crisis point, and it has reached a crisis point. The numbers of daily infections that we are seeing are mind-boggling. 
the numbers of those who are dying are mind boggling. When you are in a situation like that and uh, you are the head of state and I don't speak for him, I think uh, one of uh, the most uh, uh, tantalizing options is to lock, down. to lock down. Okay. But then you don't just lock down and sit back and say we have locked down, mm -hmm. let us see how it behaves. This is the time when you must create forums for dialogue, okay. including what the PEFA bishop is uh, ventilating. Um, we don't want uh, him to be playing to the gallery and to be appearing like some kind of uh, hero who is uh, speaking at the president. But uh, the views that he's raising can be canalized okay. through a certain system, through a certain process. And the responsibility of causing that conversation to happen resides with uh, the president. Okay. He must not waste time like uh, we lost time during the previous uh, uh, lockdowns, during the uh, curfew that uh, we have gone through for one year. We have not had opportunities to discuss solutions, the way forward, to educate ourselves. We have gotten into a vaccine, a vaccination regime that uh, we don't quite understand. In fact, it was not until the president himself got the jab that people suddenly started okay. rushing to be get the job. to be jabbed and how are we going to get out of the present uh, situation this thing does not have a contract with us that uh, it will leave at, uh, leave some at after okay. some time mm. and so uh, the various minds of this country must come together they must find a way forward okay. and the responsibility rests with the head of state, state okay. to lead from, from and, the front. And, and he's tried to lead from the front. Uh, Steve, those concerns, this was about 11 minutes. He said a lot of things. If you get time, you can listen to it. But that was the key, is blaming the politicians squarely for what's happening. You did this, you're super spreaders, and now you're locking down without considering us. I think in barring what the bishop has said, I'd like to prefer a contrary opinion. I think the problem with the bishop's sentiment is that he protects Wanainchi from scrutiny, accountability, and responsibility for their actions and decisions as rational thinkers. Nobody drags these citizens to this rally. Listen, Ken, on 9th of June 2019, the Right Honorable Prime Minister came to my office. Mm -hmm. We had lunch in a boardroom. But have you ever seen me in a BBA rally? I have never attended a BBA rally. I don't expose myself to these crowds. Possibly it can be argued, probably nobody loves Baba more than I do. I mean, I've had lunch with him in my own office, but I don't go to the rallies. Kenyans, you know, the problem is when you keep on excusing Kenyans for their political and personal choices and decisions, you defer the problem to the future. Okay. In 2022, just after the election, because of this, what, permit me to use this phrase, sheep mentality, Kenyans will easily be mobilized into ethnic violence or political violence because of what politics. If you can be summoned in the middle of a pandemic to imagine your numbers, to meet the president, to meet the right honorable prime minister, to meet the deputy president, I mean, where's the place of reason and accountability as a citizen? I'd like the bishop to speak more to that. Even as we hold the political leaders to account, because that is reckless and unacceptable in the circumstances, mm -hmm. because when COVID spreads faster than we thought, they are more cushioned than the common Mwanaenshi, granted. But we equally need to shine the spotlight on the common, and I want to tell Kenyans, you have to have to reach a position where you can begin to take personal responsibility for your choices and your decisions. Okay. I tell myself, as sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, I will never be mobilized or even to fight and die for a political cause or a politician. Okay. I'm absolutely certain about that. You will not. That's because uh, Ogola, 
uh, does not need the handouts that are uh, the other people need. The other yes. people uh, need. Uh, okay. He doesn't go to the prime minister. The prime minister, minister goes, goes to, to him. him. <laughs> Very that interesting. Distinction let me, must be made. Let, let me speak yeah. to Simeha. <laughs> <laughs> The Prime Minister goes to Steve Ogola and they eat lunch in his boardroom. That uh, if the mountain will not go to, to Mohammed, okay. Mohammed will go, go to, to the mountain. Okay. So in this case, Ogola is the mountain. <laughs> and the Prime See, Minister. Mayor, put this to perspective for us. We have a few minutes on the clock. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Ken. Yes, yes. I have a bond to pick with the Prime Minister because he hasn't come to eat lunch with me at my office. <laughs> Neither has he come to eat lunch with me. I'm always having to be the one to go to him. Anyhow, lanes, that, lanes, that, lanes, that has... lanes. <laughs> accept, accept your fate and yeah. your lane. Keep to your lane. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Ken. Uh, just on what you raised, first of all, um, I think that the bishop has a right and is a legitimate concern that he raises, mm -hmm. and he uses very um, uh, legitimate words. But I hesitate to comment on the public health aspects. I would like to comment on the governance aspects. Okay. That what we keep forgetting, that we are faced with a government that in my humble opinion has been, has demonstrated the epitome of incompetence since 2013. Never mind that there are certain things on which, certain very specific things on which um, um, we, and as when I say we, I mean I as a member of ODM have cooperated with this government with regards to very specific interests. But the fact has not changed that we sought to stop Jubilee in 2013 and in 2017 on the basis of its incompetence, okay. and that hasn't changed. Okay. Secondly, Ken, to give an example of this incompetence, what I'm calling incompetence, you do not insist on the type of system of health that we have, which is about tender, tenders. The prominence fact, factor out of our so-called health system is tenders and scams. And you completely don't pay any attention to primary and preventive health care, information to citizens, citizen participation in health care, and so on and so forth. So until and unless we sort out the governance question, yep. until and unless we have a competent team in charge of governance, we wail in vain, we complain in vain, we lament in vain, we call them out in vain okay. for as long as they are still the same people. And Perhaps they have done the best they could ever do and they wonder why we are complaining. Okay. So again, in my opinion, it has to do with governance that we have to get a competent governance team at the helm, both national and county level. We have to overhaul our health system so that it has to be based on citizens, on people's participation, okay. particularly primary and preventive health care as, as the foundation of public health, as well as information, as well as people's rights. Now, the people in charge, I do not think understand those things. For them, it's about tenders. That's why they will shout at you about oxygen cylinders and how expensive they are to government at 40,000. Yeah. But those tenders of hundreds of millions are not expensive to government. Look at that mentality and please, I just would like to persuade the three of you there, the problem is governance. Okay. Even the behavior of citizens, they are just following suit. So hopefully the citizens can suffer these consequences and listen to people like us who tell them, please, it's about governance. Okay. Let's choose wisely. Right. Then we can have a solution. Okay. I, I know you have to close. We have two minutes to close, but I know I'll give you the last chance uh, to speak. But I want to play the video of the week just before we close, because we'll get each about 40 seconds to close. Let's play the video of the week. This curfew. Has anybody come here to explain to us why it should be extended, why it was even necessary in the first place for so long? Sooner or later, uh, we will get, uh, somebody will order a curfew in the whole country or in the whole of Nairobi. How will we survive in this country? 
Right, that's the video of the week. That's one of the times when we talked about curfew. We did not understand. We barely scratched the surface of the curfew. Gentlemen, we're closing. Let me uh, begin with uh, Dr. Muluka. Yeah, curfews are basically uh, openings to be able to put things, uh, certain things uh, in order. Uh, ordinarily, we ought to have put in place preemptive measures that uh, if situations such as those that cause us to go into curfews uh, should arise, okay. we would be able to deal with them. However, if we haven't, then uh, curfews just give us an opening so that uh, we can sort uh, ourselves uh, out and uh, be able either to reverse those situations or to discover how to live with them. In the past, we haven't taken care of that. Uh, presently, one hopes that uh, we will be able to find solutions to that which uh, ails us very finally. I've heard my brother JME and I agree with him that uh, there are issues of uh, governance, they are very serious issues, uh, but uh, ODM should also trade with uh, caution because uh, if uh, you have discovered uh, intimacy with the Twilight Lady, you lack moral high ground that uh, you can stand on to start upbraiding her as a twilight uh, lady. And this Congress has been there. Uh, ODM appointees uh, all over the place in government, in uh, parastatals, in ministries, in the foreign service. Okay. And so they are part and parcel of, the, of that poor governance. All right, Steve, your closing remarks. I think what Kenyans need to note is that in 2017, following the fresh presidential election, the Right Honorable Prime Minister bitterly contested the election of His Excellency President Uru Kenyatta and attempted swearing in as the people's president. But they shook hands. Now they are best friends forever, and they are good brothers. Now there are also political conversation around the Right Honorable Prime Minister working with the Deputy President William Ruto, which post handshake have been bitter rivals. I think the lesson for Kenyans to learn, politicians have only one agenda, advancing their political careers. They will negotiate, recalibrate, re-emerge in whatever formation that is necessary to advance their political agenda. Okay. What is your personal national agenda as a Kenyan? I think Kenyans need to decide at what point they will decide to make decisions that favor them as Kenyans, and not just coalescing around politicians like a, a, like a herd of sheep to be moved left, right, and center at the political convenience of their leaders. The day we learn to think and act independently, this country will move forward. That will be the day. Joseph Simeha, close this for us. Thank you very much, Ken. Just three very quick things. One. We have neither apology nor shame associating with Twilight ladies when we are defending their interests and the interests of their clients. We choose what we associate with them on, and it's about interests, and particularly when it comes to rights. No apology. We don't apologize for that. Okay. Two. <laughs> no apology. Yes. The, the second thing is again about interests. It's uh, from the <laughs> way we do the Twilight <laughs> ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> okay, people have got to learn uh, um, politics is not a zero-sum game. Politics and public administration is about management of human needs, management of human relations, management of human interests. That that is what you have to focus on. When some people think that for you to advance in politics or in leadership, you have to bring some other people, especially those whom you view as being up there, that you must bring them down. That's a fallacy. It doesn't happen that you, you get so angry at this man or woman because they are up there and you think your success depends on bringing them down. It won't happen. And finally, on Honorable Kajuang's uh, video, God rest his soul in peace, sooner or later, someone in the executive will order parliament not to sit. Okay. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. <laughs>
What a way to end the show tonight. Thank you, Joseph, from uh, Enzugu Hotel. Thank you for speaking to us tonight from Vihiga in Western Kenya. Very well put, gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Muluka. Always a pleasure having you on board. Steve Ogola, thank you for coming tonight on News Hour. And Damien Evans, our sign language interpreter tonight, and everyone who made the show possible. My name is Ken Mijungo. Have a good night. Tomorrow, Crossfire, Sophia Wanuna will be right here with the panel to look at what's happening in the country and put to perspective all those questions that you're asking, especially on the virus and the measures put in place by the government. Have a good night and God bless.